Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. Since CBC, Fifth Estate, and BBC Panorama both ran sort of documentaries about the Drax wood pellet operation this week, all kinds of environmental, non-governmental groups have been piling on the bandwagon. Uh, right now, Stand Earth is running a point-and-click campaign, so you can harass the CEO and the uh, sustainability director for doing something that's perfectly legal, that they're authorized to do, and that's actually making very good use of waste wood. Now, the claim is that in the show, they actually saw some kind of logs on site at a Drax facility. Well, just because there's a log there doesn't mean that it's a worthy log for any other purpose. You have to remember that when trees are cut down, there's only about 20 feet of them that can be used by the timber industry. You know, if you're gonna make nice beams for houses, you need a tree that's solid and straight. But what about all the trees that are not straight? What about the ones that are rotted inside? What happens to all that wood? It's been cut. Should it just be thrown away? Should it just be left to burn in the next forest fire or to cause the next forest fire? And as I showed you in my last video, you know, if you're trying to make an economical cut, like just imagine if you have this kind of log, you can cut a couple of beams from that, right? You can cut a couple of two by fours. But there's going to be other waste there, right? In fact, the forestry industry or the logging industry, timber industry, has a very interesting diagram. If you look at how cleverly they do cut the appropriate logs, you can see that they're actually not wasting anything. They try to use everything as best they can. So, you know, for instance, here's a log here. You know, from the outside, it looks okay, right? But when you examine it, no, it's all shattered inside. You know, you can't cut anything out of that. And it's crooked. So you can't put that in a straight feeder because it'll mess up the operation. And when you cut a tree, what else do you get? You get all kinds of stuff like this. But you can't, uh, you can't put tons of these branches on a truck and transport them hundreds of miles to make them into pellets. Sometimes you have to leave them behind because it's not economical. But whatever is economical, the forestry and timber industry uses every single thing. And one of the most recent innovations from about the 1990s is making it, making waste wood into pellets. So I have some pellets here. These are specialty ones like for grilling. But you can see these little pellets are made of all kinds of crushed up wood. That's, and they're specially shaped and formed. And um, I'm sure that that's to ensure that there's proper burning and also that they're not spontaneously combusting because uh, this kind of fine sawdust, if you like, or fine wood is, uh, has its own kind of combustible energy. So, you know, we have to be a bit more common sense about these things and we shouldn't be harassing legally operating companies. Like, I'm really sick of it. CBC destroyed the reputation of the Alberta oil sands with the tipping point age of the oil sands, which in my view was a very one-sided, fact-free documentary. And now they're going after another important industry in Canada. You know, I don't really have any particular care about the company per se. I care about the workers. I care about the people who have a job there. I care about the people in England who this winter will literally freeze to death if they don't have reliable power. Because a lot of the houses in England are heated with electrical power. And that comes from the Drax wood pellet plant. So, you know, let's keep in mind, we use wood products in everything we do every day. With paper bags, right? And you get your Amazon package. When you're having a birthday party, you need some napkins. 
Fourth Industrial Revolution, we can throw that one on the fire. Whoop! Do bears do it? I think they do. Little bit of birthday cake, anyone? How about a flyer? Let's advertise something. Whoop! Zoomer magazine. Yay, that's good. We're not going to throw that out. So, you know, but, um, oh, and even the box. Even the box. Cardboard. So, you know, this is an industry that takes every single piece of wood from the trees and turns it into something useful, including these little wood pellets. And yet, um, here's Stand Earth and all these other foreign funded environmental groups trying to shut down their business, ruin their reputation, destroy their share value, and for what? What have those people at Stand Earth ever done that's productive for you in society? What have they ever made that you find useful every day? When have they ever gotten up in the wee hours of the morning and gone up on some hill to actually do some logging, you know, which is pretty hard work, dangerous work, and actually bring those trees that need to be cut, because a lot of them, when they reach the end of their useful life, they're perfect for construction materials, but if there's a wildfire, they're going to go up in smoke. Most of the trees that are cut are not old growth forest. That's just a, a lie that these guys are making up. And there have been a couple of independent surveys and audits of the company's operations to make sure about that. So I don't know why we let these environmental groups destroy our way of life. I don't want to go back to living in a cave I like having a little fire from time to time, burn off some junk in the burning barrel, have a little campfire from time to time. That's wonderful. I don't want to live that way. Do you? Because that's where these guys are leading society. And most of their premise is based upon the faulty notion that carbon dioxide is the main driver of climate change when it's not. And you can see a recent paper by Roger Pielke Jr. and Justin Ritchie showing that we are probably at peak carbon as of 2019, that we're not going into climate emergency territory, and that most of the studies on climate change have used an implausible scenario known as RCP 8.5, and that scenario uh, suggests that we would be burning more coal than exists on Earth. That's what they're basing the climate emergency on. It's ridiculous. And all these environmental groups have a bandwagon, they have a platform, they have lots of money, and all they do is they harass ordinary working people and companies that are legally authorized to operate on a faulty premise about climate change and carbon dioxide. There's no climate emergency. If we don't use the RCP 8.5 in our studies, there's no climate emergency. It's over. So we do have time and we should stop these ENGOs from destroying people's lives. That's my opinion. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. Mm -hmm.